What's up, everybody? I am BK, BKBangers.com, and welcome to another video. Today's video, I want to share with you guys how to use Scalar by Plugin Boutique inside of Studio One 3.5, as well as how to use it inside of the MPC 2.1 software. Now, I get the question often enough from several different people on how to use it inside of the MPC um, 2.1 software as well as how to use it inside of Studio One. So I'm gonna start off with how to use it inside of uh, Studio One because it's, it's more simple, the, how to get it done inside of Studio One rather than in comparison to how it's functions are used inside of the MPC. All right, so I already have Scalar opened up here. So that's Scalar opened up and I also have an instance of Keyscape. Now, in order to use this function, and get it to work inside of Scalar, I mean, in Studio One. These lanes right here, you wanna widen them. And where it says instrument input inside of whatever VSTI that you're using, it could be, you know, anything from within Studio One or any other third party instruments from Omnisphere, Nexus, uh, Keyscape, uh, Contact, any one of those, you know, any one of those third party instruments that we use, we could use this function. Now, also, Scalar comes with uh, some default sounds. I want to say. It has four different sounds, piano, synth one, synth two, synth three. But they're kind of, you know, they're not the best sounds. They're not bad. I made a couple beats with just the scalar piano sound. They're not bad. But anyway, you, you're hearing all inputs in whatever VST you're using. I'm currently using Keyscape. So then I'll scroll down right here where it says scalar. I'll put it to Scalar. Now you also want to make sure that both Scalar and whatever plugin that you're using in this scenario, it's Keyscape. You want to make sure that is a VST and not the AU. For whatever reason, it don't work if they're not both the same thing. All right. So you want to change it to Scalar. So now, as you can see, I'm getting no sound from Keyscape, but I'm but I'm getting sound from um, I'm getting sound from Scalar. So to make this work, we will uh, to make this work. We will now open a scale I'm gonna open I'm gonna choose any random scale I'm gonna bind the MIDI so I can play it from my keyboard now this works with the grayed out scales the grayed out keys from C2 to B. If I press C3, it doesn't work. All right. So now we have it, the input on Keyscape. We want to make sure the monitor is on Keyscape. So now as you can see, it's, it's feeding. It's feeding into Keyscape. So then I can then now turn off this blue 
monitor button inside of Keyscape. You see, if I take off the monitor from off of Keyscape, we still get nothing. You have to make sure that Keyscape and Scalar has the blue monitor. Now you press record. The record enable on the keyscape on the VST that you're using. You, you press record enable. You press record. Hold on. I don't like that. I'm going to do that again. That was horrible, but y'all get the point. We got uh, the sounds working inside of Scalar, inside of Keyscape. Now the, the, the plus part about it is that it records the actual chords that you, you know, you play out. This is not the best, uh, the best, uh, <laughs> what you'd say, uh, example but it's an example nonetheless. All right, so that's coming from um, that's what you did in here. You can also drag and drop the MIDI files straight onto, you know, the VST of your choice. But we're not doing that. So that's pretty much how you would use Scalar in Studio One. Now I'm going to show you the steps one more again. You will drag in your, your VST whatever it is, both Scalar and your VST has to be VST. Meaning that they both have to be, you know, on the same instrument channel. Now, I'm not sure if you, if you're able to use AU and VST, but you know, that's the instructions that Scalar gives. All right, so you open up the lane right here in the panel where it says instrument input. You change that from what it is to scalar. It'll be on, I guess, all inputs or none. And you will change that to scalar. And both scalar and your VST has to be the monitor has to be on in order for this to work. You press record enable on on um on your VST and then you record in and you bind your MIDI. Right? You bind the MIDI. Now also the other thing that you can do is you can play it you can detect uh the scale so i just you know i played that out originally and now i'm going to detect it i'm going to press play see we're not hearing nothing but it's actually playing And it detected it as the C altered scale. And those are the notes that I was actually playing. All right. So that is the utilization of um, Scalar inside of Studio One 3.5.
Now on the flip, I'm going to show you guys how to do the same thing inside of the NPC 2.1 software. All right, catch y'all on the flip. So now we're over here in the NPC 2.1 software and the trick of getting Scalar to work inside of the MPC 2.1 software is that you have to use a third party uh, plugin, and that third party plugin comes from Blue Cat's patchwork. It's the brand Blue Cat Audio, and the plugin is called Patchwork. Now, this is not a free plugin by all means, uh, this is the price $99 for it. Uh, this is the 2.0 version of the software. I'm currently using a uh, an older version from it. Uh, uh, my engineer, a good friend of mine, also doubles as my, my audio engineer. Um, a while ago, years ago, he gave me a, a, a hard drive, well, a folder in my hard drive. One day I was at the studio and I was working on beats and he just hand, he, he said, drop this folder on your on your hard drive. I said, thank you, thought nothing of it. Um, I came across a video because I was researching how to get uh, the MIDI. See, it's a MIDI thing. And inside the studio, inside of MPC's uh, software, this, the MIDI is locked inside of the software. So like stuff like Scalar, to use Scalar as a plugin and then have it read or have another VST instrument feed Scalar, it has to be on the same MIDI channel. For whatever reason, Akai software doesn't translate that. I was on the phone with Akai several different times and they're just telling me it doesn't work that way. The, um, the MIDI function that it has is for you to record in uh, external hardware information. So that that doesn't work either. So this was the, the fix, if you will. All right, so again, this costs money. So I'm not telling you guys uh, to go and purchase anything. I'm just saying for those of us who need or would like the use of scaling since we already purchased it and we might just be using it we might just have the mpc software unfortunately for right now in this current version you have to use a third party in order for it to work all right so back over into the mpc software i have patchwork currently loaded up if it'll load up I have Keyscape already ready to go. Now, the fun thing about this is that you can, after you set this up, you can set it and forget it. All right, you don't have to do it multiple times. I mean, you might want some more instances of different instruments, but once you set it, you can save it and forget about it. So. Um, this is the current instance of uh, Scalar that I'm using. All right, so nothing crazy, nothing fancy. I was just using, I was trying to figure it out, so I just, you know, put something together real quick. Uh, so you put Scalar in the pre section right here. You would, the host would already, the MIDI input will already be on host, all channels. But in order for this to work, you have to go to MIDI output and select port A, right? Now, again, Whatever VSTI that you choose to use, 
is what you would put in this section right here, parallel chains. I'm using Keyscape. So I put Keyscape in parallel chains. Now you would open this section, go to MIDI input. Host will all automatically be on all channels. You leave that alone. You go to port A, all channels. All right. And that's how it works pretty much right there. Scalar pre, whatever instrument that you're using, parallel chains. You set the MIDI input, the MIDI output on scalar to port A. And inside of parallel chains, you set the MIDI input to port A, all channels. Now, once you got that all set up, you can then go, oh, hold on. Once you have it all set up, right, we're scalar. You know, you set up your scales, however you set it up, you know. I already showed you how to do that within Studio One, but it's the same thing. You choose a scale of your liking, you bind the MIDI, you play the MIDI from your keyboard, from your MIDI keyboard, um, and then you record it. Now, unfortunately, this is due to Akai. When you when you record the keys, it's recording. So it's recording, what key is this? This is, this is F2, right? So it records what you play, the actual key of which you play. It doesn't record the full triad of the chord or the chord progression at all. You hear the chord progression because the chord progression is actually there but it doesn't record the the midi notes the triad the progression it doesn't record the midi notes here so the workaround to that is you would solo this track you would then go to sampler and then you would arm the track and you press play and record it this way. You then disarm the track and you would name it chords, right? You keep it, you then go to sample edit, and then now you have it. Then you discard, you discard that, right? Let me tighten this up a little bit more. You get that, get this right here in the beginning. There we go. Get that right there, up to there. Let's card that. So now you have that, you have this information. You're now able to So now you have that information, you're now able to then go to an audio track and drag and drop that into the audio field here. And you can also, you know, chop it up and do your thing. All right, so go back here.
Take off solo, put that back on mute. And I'm gonna show you guys, this is what I, I came up with just for, you know, educational purposes. <laughs> Alright, so that's pretty much how you go about using Scalar inside of the MPC 2.1 software. Again, it's tedious. It is tedious. You know, you want to get to work. You're not thinking about using a plugin to, to patch the MIDI. You know what I mean? But, you know, don't let that stop you. Create to your heart's content. And I'll just show you one more time for the road. Because some of us, you know, we need to hear it more than one time in order for it to stick. You can always, you know, rewind the video and get it. But in the pre section, this is where you would load in. You would load your VST. I didn't show that before, so it's a good thing I came back. You would go to, you know, Scalar, right? So you have to load the VST. I didn't mention that before. I said it, but I didn't show it. You actually have to load the actual, you know, the, the file, all right? It's a little different. So once that's loaded, you go to the MIDI input will always be on host all channels. Then you go to MIDI output port A. Then you load whatever VST of your choice. You then load it here. And then you go to MIDI input port a all channels you don't the host all channels will be there but you don't got to mess with that you leave that alone you go to port a all channels and that's it and then you record your magic to your heart's content all right so do remember that music is life it is our dna y'all keep banging peace love and light till next time peace